This vintage mug is amazing. How do you think it was made? Ah, it is made using a process called slip casting. Yeah, but what does that mean? Oh, um, well, slip is cast into a plaster mold to make the mug. Okay, but how do they make it hollow? Um, yeah. All right, as you may have guessed, for this Tiki Technical Tuesday, we're going to dive deep into what exactly slip casting means. Sure, we know it involves slip, and we know it involves casting or putting things into a mold in order to make a perfect copy, but how do the mugs get hollow? How does it even work? Let's dive deep. First, we'll start with slip. So here we have slip. Slip is liquid clay. Clay is a mineral, well, I guess it's a group of minerals, that they get out of the ground. It's a rock. It occurs naturally. They mine it out of the earth. Um, so if we look at it, let's take a look at a microscopic view. Uh, we have clay particles. These clay particles are what, when they're in the kiln, will bond together and make a hard ceramic body. Now, there are other things inside of clay, but we're going to let people that are, you know, fine art majors in college worry about that. Most of it burns away in the firing, so we're just going to focus on that special clay particle. Now, that clay particle is floating around inside of here, this liquid slip. Now, a common misconception about slip is it's just clay with a lot of water. They think that people take this stuff, pottery clay, the kind of clay you used in fourth grade to make stuff or that people throw pots with on the wheel, and they think that they're just going to put it in water and not a lot of water and you mix it up and make like a mud water. Now, that won't really work because of this thing called gravity. If we have all these clay particles floating in suspension after we mix it up, the second we stop stirring, all of those clay particles are just going to fall down to the bottom of the cup. They won't stay in suspension. So how do we keep all those clay particles up in suspension? Well, that involves a little thing that I like to call science. This is the secret weapon that makes slip possible. It is a deflocculant, and that means that it keeps clay particles floating. Let's take a closer look. Now, I am no chemist or scientist, but I do know that when you add a deflocculant to the solution, it puts a negative charge onto these little particles of clay. What does that mean? Well, they become like little magnets, and they oppose each other. They space themselves out, and they stay in suspension. So now that we've got all the particles negatively charged and floating, we can actually pack way more clay in there, or if to look at it another way, we use less water. In fact, the amount of water in slip is remarkably close to the amount of water in standard pottery clay. How close? I'm glad you asked. Standard pottery clay comes in at about 21% water, whereas liquid slip is only 30% water. That's a difference of just 9% between the two clays. So why is water content such a big deal? Well, to answer that question, we should move on to the second part of slip casting, the casting part, and that means we're going to talk about molds. For today's example, I'm going to use this mold. It is my glaze tester mold, and it is a little mold I made of this fellow, Busca! Um, kaiju Busca, if you will. Um, it's a great simple mold, and I used it to do all my glaze testing. Anyway, let's take a look at the inside of it. Molds are used to duplicate things, and most molds will have similar features. They'll have a gate for your materials to go into. They will have keys that will help the mold halves register when you put them together. They will have a well, which will hold extra material, and then they'll have the actual negative space that will become the casting. Okay, I know. Maybe you're like, blah, blah, mold, blah, blah, slip. This is so technical. But this is Tiki Technical Tuesday, and I'm about to get to the meat of the issue. We're going to talk about how mugs become hollow. The key is slip casting is a sedimentary process. Imagine, if you will, water moving along in a stream. This water contains some mud, dirt particles, and as those particles move through the water, gravity is pulling them to the riverbed. The more and more time passes, the more and more mud gets pulled out of the water and lined to the bottom of the river. 
The longer the river flows, the more silt you get on the bottom of that river. Okay, okay, so you got it. You got the river thing, you got the clay particles getting pulled down by gravity. But if you've really been following along, you're thinking, but gravity doesn't work anymore because of the magical deflocculant we used. All of our clay particles are negatively charged and they're hanging out in suspension. So how do I call it a sedimentary process? It's very simple. Okay, so we've got the slip inside of the mold, and this is when the magical dance of the two critical components of slip casting happens, the slip and the plaster of the mold. Funny thing about plaster, it's porous. It is mostly air, and we're counting on that porosity to wick the water out of the slip using capillary action. The capillary action takes place the second the slip fills the mold. Let's take a closer look. Like a giant paper towel, the plaster mold sucks the water out of the slip. This is the capillary action, and it replaces gravity in this sedimentary process, pulling all of the particles of clay against the mold walls. As time passes, more clay particles are packed against the wall, and the walls get thicker. So the longer this slip sits inside of the mold, the thicker the wall is going to be. Now I'm going to give this about 45 minutes before I check on it again, and you'll see the level of slip will actually drop. That's why we have the well on the top. We don't want the slip to drop so far that it will start to get into the space where the important part is, the model. Now, 45 minutes, it's arbitrary. Lots of things will change how long you let this thing dwell. Um, it can depend on the humidity of the air, how much moisture is in your slip itself, how much moisture is in your mold, lots of factors. Things you don't have to worry about. The big takeaway here is the longer the slip sits inside of the mold, the thicker the wall is going to be of your finished casting. All right, it has been 45 minutes and look at this. You can see that the level of slip has dropped in the well. The more moisture gets pulled out of it, it means that the level is gonna just drop as the walls build up. Now, I believe that this is gonna be Thick enough for me, so I want to stop the process here. How do I stop the process? Easy, we get the slip back out of the mold. Ta-da! Now, I can't just open this right now. The slip is still very soft. It's, as you can see, in a rather liquid-like state. Now, the slip that has built up that, that wall on the inside is a little more firm, but still, it's too soft for me to open. If I open the mold now, it'll tear apart. I need to let this sit for a while. I'm going to let it sit for two hours, and then we'll pop it open and see what we got. Alrighty, it has been a couple of hours, and I think that this is ready to open. How do we know? Well, in the past few hours, whatever moisture was still in this clay, this firmly packed wall of clay that we have formed on the surface of the mold, we've given it time to evaporate even further. So there's even less moisture in the clay. Less moisture means that you can actually touch it without, you know, it being all smushy like the slip was earlier today. Let's see what we got. Not too shabby. That is how you make slip cast pieces hollow. You know the secret now. And since we now know the secret, perhaps it is time for us to attempt the very first slip casting of the new Dead Bastard mug. Let's give it a shot. Oh, it is 5.45 in the morning, and we are going to try to cast the Dead Bastard for the very first time. Now, the first time you cast something, it rarely works. I have low expectations of success for today, but we're gonna learn a lot. We're gonna learn how much slip we need to put in here. We're gonna learn how long it needs to sit in here. And we're gonna start to learn how to open up the mold without ruining the thing that's inside. I'm going to attempt five of them today. Instead of attempting 10 and ruining 10, I'm just gonna ruin five. But maybe, just maybe, we'll have five successes.
Let's find out. Slip casting always begins by warming up the slip, and by doing this, I mix it for a good five to 10 minutes. Those negatively charged slip particles are still staying in suspension, but they kind of gel when they sit overnight, so I give it a good mixing to get things flowing like water again. Since this is the first time I have cast these molds, I need to put straps on them, and I also go through and mark them all. I number them so that I can keep track of which one is doing what, and I put little notes to make sure that I know which end goes up and which end goes down. This mold is a little tricky because it needs to sit at an angle while it drains. Once the slip is fully mixed, I stack all the molds onto the slip casting table and get ready to pour. This little cup that I'm setting up, you'll see what I need that for later. I just need a little cup of slip for phase two of this pouring. All right, it's go time. Let's fill these molds up with slip. Okay, I hope this works. Okay, now that the slip is dwelling in the molds, I can talk a little about why I have, I'm not gonna say low expectations for today, but I will have realistic expectations for today. So I have found in my experience that the first few castings rarely work for a couple of reasons. One, oddly enough, the first cast sometimes will stick in the mold. I don't know why, when the plaster is getting its very first kind of introduction to slip, it can get a little grippy. Um, so there's that to consider. Two, when you open a mold, every mold has its own special way that it wants to be opened and the piece wants to come out safely. And you gotta kind of learn how to do that. So sometimes when you demold things the first time, maybe I take a piece off in a weird way and it'll scratch up the piece or the piece will tear. Um, so there's that that I've gotta get through. And third and biggest, this mold is a little tricky because just like we did at the Puka Pounder, we are going to erase the um, pouring gate. So in other words, that thing that I just poured the slip through on the top, that's not the opening in the mug, that's actually the top of the mug's head. So after this is done dwelling, we're going to drain it, we're gonna clean out that hole, we're going to take a syringe, which I don't have here, we're gonna put some more slip back in, that's why I poured that extra cup of slip. Then I'm gonna put this plug in, we're gonna flip it over, and let that opening kind of seal over. It's complex, don't expect to understand it now. You'll see it as this episode unfolds or in future casting episodes where I actually get a good cast out of this mold. And then to even make things crazier, this has to sit at a special angle in the mold so that the slip will be even on this top. So I have cut some special boards, I've got these weird little things. Lots of experiments, lots of experiments is what I'm getting to. It's gonna be a crazy morning, and I will consider myself very lucky if just one of these work today. Okay, this well is another unknown with the new mold. Um, first of all, the plastic bits here on top are to keep the slip from skinning over. When uh, air comes in contact with the slip, uh, it will get a skin on it. This keeps the skin from happening. Um, but the unknown is, is will the well be big enough? So at the top of these molds, you have a well, and that compensates for the dropping level of slip as a slip builds up on the insides of the mold walls. Hopefully this well is large enough that I don't have to keep adding slip to this throughout the 55 minutes of dwell time that we're going to do today. Now, it seems okay, but I have a timer set, so every 15 minutes I'm gonna come and check this slip level. You can see it's fallen about maybe just shy of a quarter of an inch. Um, and that's done that in the very first 15 minutes. So I think we're gonna be fine. I'm not gonna have to top this well off. Thank God, because it's a real pain in the butt to have to constantly keep filling this thing. Um, but these are, these are all the unknowns that you just gotta keep an eye on for the very first castings. Okay, I think I've got everything ready to go. It's gonna be tricky, and I just wanna make sure I have my little mise en place all set up. I have the slip here. I've got my syringe that I'll be drawing the slip out of. I have the notes here so that I remember for number one, I'm doing 30 cc's, number two, 30 cc's, three, 35, 40, and then 50. And then I have all of my plugs laid out in numerical order so I can grab the mold, fill, cap, no wait, sorry, ha, I'm getting that wrong. I'm gonna grab the mold, 
clean it with my little knife, um, then I'm going to fill it, cap it, flip it, and stack it on the wood that I've got set up over there on the other table. Six minutes to go! I think it looks gelled enough. We're going to go for it. Okay, it is crazy watching me uh, work away on this very first casting because I just have no idea what I'm doing. I, I have a concept of what I'd like to do, but I just, I'm just trying to figure it out. Now, I, I can say that as I'm editing this, we have cast many, many, many more of these, and it definitely goes a lot smoother than it does here. Thank God for fast forward. Here I'm drawing in the slip that is going to be capping off what was the opening for this thing. Here we go. We squirt it in. I put the plug in, and then I've got to rotate it around. I want that slip to completely coat the plug that we put in so it hides totally what was the entry gate on this mold. Now, this is also a tricky part. It's got to sit at a perfect angle in order for that plug to be covered perfectly. Okay, it's been a little while, and we're going to go for it. We're going to try to open one. Another kind of unknown with the first castings is how long do you let it sit in the mold? I don't know. We're going to find out by staggering the openings. If I open this and it's too early and it's soft and it falls apart, I know to wait a little longer before I open the next ones. Not too bad. So that first one was firm enough for me to open, which means I knew it was safe to go ahead and open up the rest of the castings. I'm gonna be making use of these little plier tools. I love them to death. They are fantastic for prying open molds. I'm gonna put a link in the description of this video if you'd like to get a set for yourself. They are actually automotive tools. Anyway, look at this guy. Ah, I am so relieved at how well these first castings turned out. It almost never happens this nicely. Okie dokie. Amazingly, they all came out of the molds okay and we were able to seam them all and they look fantastic. Um, that is a remarkably good first day of casting. I am considering myself very fortunate. Now, I'm going to go back and look at these as they dry and see what the different thicknesses is in the area that we had the plug to decide what the actual volume of slip works best for that plug when we go into production casting, which we will start the day after tomorrow. And then it's going to be 10 of these a day until we get the whole edition done. Woo! Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of Tiki Technical Tuesday. As you can see, we have been very busy since the very first casting, and we have up to ooh, 78 castings of the new Dead Bastard mug, plus a bunch of new glaze testers because I ran out of these. What is next for Tiki Technical Tuesday? Well, we're going to have to get some glaze onto these fellows, so that's what we're going to be tacking in the next episode. And in the meantime, if you want to learn a little bit more about Slip, you can look way back to episode, uh, I don't know, we'll put it up in the graphics here to find out a little bit more about how I mix Slip for the studio. It's an old one, so get ready for portrait mode. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do. I greatly appreciate it, and I will see you next time.